Good afternoon. The people of Kenya can firmly and unanimously affirm that Kenya is a free, open, and democratic country based on the rule of law and constitutionalism. Our fundamental rights and freedoms are guaranteed by the Constitution and cannot be taken away. They include the freedom of conscience and expression, the right to assemble and to demonstrate, picket, and present petitions. In the past few weeks, we have all witnessed the direct and robust exercise of these rights and freedoms by Kenyans who called on their government to pay attention to urgent national issues and to prioritize necessary changes and reforms to actualize their aspirations. It is with deep regret that I have to say that many Kenyans lost their lives and others seriously injured as a result of disturbances occasioned by lawless activity during these protests. This is not how and where our de democracy should proceed. And we must do all we can to ensure that this does not occur again in future. The government of Kenya will provide necessary support to all families and citizens who lost their loved ones. Unfortunately, there has been many instances of excessive, unlawful, dangerous, and harmful conduct during the demonstrations and engagements as a consequence of which many persons have been arrested and charged in courts with various offenses. I urge the criminal justice agencies to take effective measures and ensure that people who may have been innocently caught up on the wrong side of things and those not implicated in crimes be released and charges against them withdrawn. This will enable the agencies to focus their resources, efforts, and time in investigating and prosecuting serious criminal elements who took advantage of peaceful demonstrations to advance a dangerous agenda of lawlessness, anarchy, and mayhem. It is important that these suspects are brought to book and that they are prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I also take this opportunity to affirm the constitutional authority and duty vested on our national security institutions to protect our country against internal and external threats to sovereignty, to lives of our people, our rights, freedoms, property, peace, stability, and prosperity, as well as our collective national interest. Consequently, I call on the National Police Service to use its mandate responsibly, professionally, and effectively in full compliance with the Constitution with a view to promoting the national objectives of Article 238, 239, and 244 of our Constitution. All breaches and violations by police officers must be handled expeditiously through due process with a view to giving Kenyans a police service that upholds the highest standards of integrity. As citizens of this great nation, we all have a duty to balance our rights and responsibilities at all times so that the legitimate exercise of our rights and freedoms does not undermine our broader aspirations to remain a civilized, democratic, and peaceful country governed under the rule of law and institutions of governance for the benefit of all of us. Over the last month, one month, the livelihoods 
and property of many innocent people have also been destroyed, plunging them into destitution and jeopardizing the welfare of their dependents. The government of Kenya will equally take measures to support these Kenyans on the path to recovery of their businesses. I direct the relevant ministries to obtain, verify, and provide accurate data to facilitate appropriate government action within the next 30 days. I want to give the people of Kenya an assurance that our government listens to them and that for the last one month, I have led the government in engaging and listening to citizens from all walks of life as they express themselves in different forums and on various platforms. What has emerged as the foremost national concern requiring urgent and decisive action is the vexing matter of corruption and the non-negotiable desire for accountable leadership and integrity in governance. I have this to say to Kenyans. I have heard you, and I have heard you clearly. Consequently, the following measures shall be taken to accelerate progress to achieving the objectives stated by the people. Number one, I will be proposing amendments to the Evidence Act and the Criminal Procedure Code, among other necessary legislative amendments to all statutes relating to corruption, to expedite investigations and prosecution of corruption and economic crimes cases, and provide for their conclusion within six months. We shall also be proposing amendments to the Witness Protection Act to overhaul the statutory and institutional framework to protect and incentivize whistleblowers and enhance witness protection, making it easier and safer for citizens to come forward and report corruption as well as other criminal activities. Number three. Within 90 days, we shall propose amendments to the Public Finance Management Act and Public Procurement and Disposal Acts to overhaul the institutional and operational framework of public procurement, which has been identified as the epicenter of corruption, conflict of interest, and abuses of, of office in the public sector with a view to deploying digital infrastructure within the next six months. The aim of this measure is to provide an open and transparent public procurement platform which gives open, real-time, and end-to-end -end public visibility of public procurement from advertisement to award of contract and to whom it is awarded, and what amount the people of Kenya will pay. Number four, I have engaged with the parliamentary leadership and asked Parliament to expeditiously pass the Conflict of Interest Bill with the explicit caveat that I shall veto any bill enacted if it does not establish the highest bar with respect to accountability, integrity, and anti-corruption. I will make full use of the power given to me under Article 115 of the Constitution to make sure that the bill meets the appropriate standards set out in the original bill. Number five, while fully respecting the independence of the national justice, law, and order institutions, and pursuant to a commitment to consult and collaborate in leveraging 
their institutional capabilities in effective, expeditious, and conclusive investigations in respect of all active cases. It is essential for these institutions to provide a time frame to the people of Kenya, because what, that is what the people of Kenya want, within which proceedings shall be concluded and the same timelines clearly communicated to the public. Number six, about 400 billion shillings is spent on tax expenditure every year, especially on VAT refunds, a process that is largely opaque and with limited accountability. Within 90 days, I will be working with Parliament to provide a legislative and regulatory framework to make this process transparent, open, and accountable with a view to reducing this huge public expenditure and direct savings from this exercise to the productive sectors of our economy. This is going to be a very important exercise of engaging parliament in consultations with the people as to whether it is right for us to spend 400 billion Kenya shillings every year collected from the people of Kenya to pay a few companies on matters of VAT refund. Number, six, number seven, the government will also work with parliament to tighten legislation to reduce and eliminate imports of goods and products already manufactured in Kenya so as to promote our value addition, our manufacturing, and industrialization program in our quest to create more jobs, create more opportunities, and create wealth in our nation. We must have a national conversation as to whether we want to be a supermarket for products from other countries, or we want to produce products that are already, that we already have manufacturing capacity in Kenya. In my last address to the nation, I undertook to consult a broad spectrum of stakeholders from all sectors, levels, and regions in order to constitute a broad-based government. In line with this undertaking, I will be forwarding additional names to Parliament for vetting prior to appointment based on the understanding of the Cabinet's essential role in driving the transformational agenda that makes Kenya a better, more just, and more prosperous nation for all of us. Once constituted, the new cabinet will steward our transformation agenda that is already in place in providing effective and efficient public services, expanding opportunities for employment and wealth creation, and creating a tide that lifts every boat. Our collective ambition is to turbocharge the performance of our economy to achieve our universal health coverage, which ensures that no one is left behind or impoverished on account of healthcare costs. Also offer an equitably funded education system, which looks out for learners from vulnerable backgrounds and ensure that Kenyans from all walks of life live in safe and dignified housing through our affordable housing program. Additionally, our transformation agenda commits to provide reliable clean water, last mile connectivity of electricity, and to secure more business opportunities for enterprises and employment opportunities for our young people, 
both here at home and abroad. Our explicit aim is to transform Kenya into a middle-income society, and it is essential for us to urgently mobilize adequate resources to fund these necessary programs and projects. Consequently, after extensive consultations, I have nominated the following persons for consideration and approval by the National Assembly for appointment as cabinet secretaries. I commend the leadership of diverse organizations, both in public and private sectors, including political parties, for their encouraging response to my outreach to consult on forming a broad-based government, their willingness to set aside partisan positions and interests in order to join a visionary partnership for the radical transformation of Kenya is a historic gesture of their patriotism. I know and I understand acutely the huge expectation of the people of Kenya on me and this administration. And I equally understand that that responsibility can be made easier if we work together as a nation. And as I said, the opportunity we have to work together across political lines, across different divisions, is much more greater than the challenge and the crisis we have in our hands. I take this opportunity to express my appreciation for their commitment and reiterate my pledge to engage alongside them in a national conversation that is inclusive, citizen-centered, and aimed at consolidating and accelerating the actualization of inclusive growth and national transformation. As I take this step, and as I exp expand and broaden this administration, I am acutely aware that the responsibility of managing the affairs of the country vested in the cabinet, in the expanded cabinet, will require of us to work together and to focus on that which brings honor to our country. I will shortly give you the list of my nominees. Just hold your horses. <laughs> Just hold your horses. Great. Um, oops. 
That's the old list again. Where did it disappear? I think this is, this is a problem of making it very confidential and not allowing many people to, to have a look at it. As you're all aware, the list I sent to the National Assembly, I have since amended so that Roslinda Soipantuya now goes to the Ministry of Defense the Honorable Aden Baredwale moves to environment, climate change, and forestry. I have now forwarded the name of John Mbadi Ngongo to the Ministry of National Treasury and Economic Planning. Salim Mvuria Mgala, Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry, Ms. Rebecca Miano, Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife, the Honorable James Opio Wandai, Ministry of Energy and Petroleum, the Honorable Onesmas Kipchumba Murkomen, Ministry of Youth Affairs, Creative Economy and Sports, the Honorable Hassan Ali Joho, Ministry of Mining, Blue Economy, and Maritime Affairs. The Honorable Dr. Alfred Nganga Mutua, Ministry of Labor and Social Protection. The Honorable Wycliffe Ambetsa Oparanya, Ministry of Cooperatives and Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprise Development. The Honorable Justin Bidan Njoka Muturi, Ministry of Public Service and Human Capital Development. Madam Stella Soy Langat, Ministry of Gender, Culture, Arts, and Heritage. I am still working on the other pending nominees and I will be announcing them shortly. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless our great nation, Kenya. Santini Sana.